So this is my office, it's the area where I download all of our phantom footage. I've got two cine stations here, one for the Flex 4K, one for the 2K. Different cine mags, different sizes. And then we got a load of storage, a load of hard drives to store the stuff on. Now the current situation is that both of these cine stations download using Ethernet, which is only one gigabit. And there is a way to upgrade to 10 gigabit Ethernet, which is what I want to do today to this PC. Now, slight issue, um, Newegg got me this sweet PC, big, huge case, but when I was designing this room, I wanted an L desk, but the company I ordered this table from sent me an executive desk which doesn't support the L pieces. The L piece is going to attach to a different main desk with this mounting piece. But without that, it just goes like this onto the floor. So instead of returning it, because faff, I thought, why don't I just balance it on something? And thankfully, this PC case is the biggest one I've ever seen in my life. And with a little bit of wood, I've wedged up the other end of the desk. So instead of being on the floor at this height, it's uh, perfectly rested here. And that's worked pretty well for the last year or so. But now I want to perform some upgrades on the PC. And the desk is going to fall down if I pull the PC out. So I either have to take everything off and disconnect all this, which I just don't want to do. Or maybe we could jack the table up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have to rig it just like normal summer, guys, because I don't think any jack is big enough to do the whole of the table there. <laughs> You don't often get a car that we get in at this height. So. Yeah. <laughs> you could fit four PCs into that. It's massive. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, I'm not, I can't really remember the amount of space I have inside. So it'll be interesting to see what we can cram into it. But why don't we take a look at uh, under here? Is that like chipboard? Just yeah. It's just a bit of particle board that, uh, well, I don't even think it's from this desk. But I just wedged it and it was absolutely perfect. Is it? Totally level. Is it really? Yeah. Just totally level. I love when stuff like that just works out. So the main thing I want to do is be able to use footage sooner after I've shot it. I currently have to download it through Gigabit Ethernet. Uh, usually I make a copy of it and I transcode it into a movie, an MOV file. ProRes, typically, that I can then edit with. So there's a few different steps before I can actually get it into Final Cut. So what I do want to do is just upgrade all the, the bottlenecks. We've got 10, 10 terabyte drives uh, for a total of 100 tubs, two SSDs, and to alleviate the SATA bottleneck, I've got an NVMe SSD that will plop into the M.2 slot. Lovely. The RAID controller and 10 gig Ethernet card. So we've got a 12 ton bottle jack. I found something that's kind of sturdy, it's this microwave. <laughs> I'm going to use it because this doesn't reach all the way up to the top of the table um, on its own. We've propped it on this microwave. Yeah. Because we could use the bin, I suppose. Would you ever, would you advise this sort of uh, setup for jacking up a desk? Not for trucks, but I'd say for desks. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> this is a frame for a poster board here. We had a fan who wanted a poster, but I couldn't get one in time from the store, so I just <laughs> took mine down and gave it to them. So now there's no picture of you in here, B. Oh. Okay. Slight issue? Uh, that's the wrong side. <laughs> that's the back of the motherboard. It's not a light. Blinking out. It's your own fault for getting a massive PC. Well, I thought it would be funny. Well, I also wanted room for expansion for this exact reason. Oh, I have to say, those cables look good. The cable management? What mm. a shoddy me. <laughs> I barely even touched it. I've never been known for cable management. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. So you've got ten slots. Ooh, ooh. 
had to buy a few new SATA cables. Or SATA. I don't, I've never said SATA, what do you say? SATA. SATA, yeah. it's an English thing to say SATA. In this here beast, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, two SSDs, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, one more SSD, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Right. So what's the total storage of that? Uh, it's a hundred or two hundred and ten terabytes. Oh. At varying speeds. Oh, forgot about the uh, NVMe one here. 112. That's ridiculous. 112 terabytes. That's insanity. Just in a PC case. Overkill. It's actually not overkill. It's really not. <laughs> Need it for a... Could do with a lot more. I like how you're struggling for space and it's a fiddly job in such a massive computer. Get in there. Get in there, you bastard. You're completely hidden by the computer. <laughs> yeah, it'll do that. What it does mean having it so filled is that it's practically impossible to get some stuff out. Like to remove the RAM on the other side, I'd have to take this <laughs> this cooler off. It's like when you go and take your car in to get it fixed, the guy in the garage is like, oh yeah, it's only a small part, but we have to take the tire engine apart to get to it. <laughs> so we've got 16 gigs of RAM there. 60, <laughs> can't even see it, but it is back there. 16 over here. Um, 15 drives and an absolutely maxed power supply. All right, so now let's uh, put it all back together and see how many of these drives show up. How many do you reckon? Take a pull. I reckon they'll all show up, why not? Yeah? Yeah, I reckon you've done it. I like how you have made the most of the size of it. It is good. You, you like what? How you've made the most of the size of it. Yeah. And you've not wasted it. Let's see how heavy this is now. Oh. Does it feel like, you know, when you shove something into a cupboard in like a cartoon and then you open the cupboard and everything just falls out? Yeah. Got my ports there. Got my two new ports. Um, this is all motherboard. It was all there already. But we have added this little hefty bint. As you can see, the two graphics cards, I don't really use my... <laughs> don't really have as many monitors as I could. Just got the one. This one, uh completely unused in terms of its I.O. That's going to be a nightmare to connect back there. There's three antennas for the Wi-Fi. Oh. Like... How did you do it at the first then, when you first put it in? Just pain in the ass. Just pain, just a pain. i tell you how I did it. I shoved my phone back there with the light on. Yeah. And then uh, looked through the camera on my watch and had like a live feed of what I was doing. Seriously? Yeah. That's wicked. <laughs> Ooh. 10 gig Ethernet. Satisfying click as well, love it. Which is actually a very old standard, but in terms of phantom cameras, that's pretty fast. Oh, hello. Oh, that is a computer. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do your vacuum with that thing. <laughs> well, Might have to just drag the desk out. That would defeat the entire purpose of the jack and everything. I drag the computer and the desk at the same time. Yeah, good idea. That would work. Quite satisfying, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I have to reinstall all my games. They're on one of those. What? <laughs> you could have just put that one back in. I don't know which one it's on. Oh, they're, ident they're identical. <laughs> Did you get it? Do you reckon you got lucky and got the one that's? The four terabyte one that was in there before? Don't think so. No? No. What are the chances? You know what, it, there, there needs to be a hard drive that when you assign it a name, it actually etches it physically onto the hard drive. So when you pull it out, it's like, oh, Steam library. Be cool, wouldn't it? That would be cool. All right, I'm gonna wheel this out a little. Is it coming? Yeah. So whenever you are supporting everything and all the weight on your desk with a PC, Make sure it can also hold your weight as well, because you're going to have to climb over it. Oh, not recommended. No? What if you go through the middle? Like, the middle's the weak part, right? What if you go through the middle, and all your stuff goes through the middle? It would be hilarious. Alright, that's <laughs> on. 
<laughs> very on. similar to something that happened to me at work. Oh dear. Oh, I've sort of not left much room, to be honest. You're committed now. Oh. <laughs> How much room you got back there? Not, not much. <laughs> I should have I should have eaten more greens as a child. Oh bugger. <laughs> That's pretty abstract. Gonna do the old uh, lean and plug. Oh by the way, whenever you have a desk, make sure you definitely get a globe and cheap desk toys to go along with it. It is essential. It's not a workplace for that one. Okay, so, what we've been doing this all for is that I'm going to finally be able to use the 10G plug on this. Is that why you did it? Just because it annoyed you that you had that, but you couldn't use it? Well, the fact that this has the speed built in and I'm just using a tenth of it, that was kind of annoying. This one has an upgrade you can do too, but I don't have that. Do you, like, do you find satisfaction in upgrading your crap, B? Yeah. Especially if I don't have to buy a new one. Like, that's why this computer is really cool, because you can just upgrade it to the max. At some point, I'm going to upgrade my, uh, all my networking stuff to 10 gig. Two. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? you got to do it like a crab. You're like a spider getting over there. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Well done. Alright, let's slide it all back, shall we? Would have been wise to turn on the power supply while I was back there. Oh! <laughs> Thankfully, I know exactly where that is. There we go. Okay. Moment of truth. You feel the rumble of all the hard drives going. I think I felt the floor shake. <laughs> it booted. Well, that's the first step done. So this is a full RAM save. I remember it well. This video hasn't come out yet. Or maybe it has by the time this has come out. But it's one of those ones where I just hit save immediately. Didn't bother trimming it, just saved the entire RAM because it's all gold. <laughs> There's funny stuff before, there's funny stuff after, get a lot. So first, we'll download using the one gigabit ethernet port on the Cine station to the original one gigabit ethernet network adapter in my motherboard that I used to use onto an original box standard old hard drive. So this is the way I've been doing it ever since we started the Sloma guys, and we'll time it. After that, I'll switch it into the 10 gigabit ethernet port on the Cine station into my new 10 gigabit ethernet adapter in the PC and we'll save it down to the new 2 terabyte NVMe SSD M.2 drive that I put in. Hell of a mouthful. That is a mouthful. <laughs> Time that as well and we'll hopefully see quite a significant difference in download speed. So we'll start with the slow way. And boop. We are now on a journey of ones and zeros. So how long does it usually take then for all your files if you're gonna do one? I don't know, honestly, no, hours. Because usually I just stick the Cinemag in. I may have like 30 or so takes of varying amounts. But uh, I used to see it leave overnight usually. Definitely uh, takes long enough to make a cup of. Yeah, do you want a cup of tea or something? Or should probably, we? Probably should. How far has it gone now? We're at 11%. It's been uh, 1 minute 40. Huh. So this is the kind of thing where one file doesn't take too long. I could sit and watch this. Be bloody bored. Don't know why I would watch it. But it would be done soon. But when I've got a whole mag to download, you know, terabytes of data, that's when I just leave it going overnight just because it takes so long. And it ties up my PC doing it too. So I'm really going to enjoy this upgrade. I also then, after this download phase, have a conversion phase, which is where I'm going to convert the files from a Cine file. That takes up more, the bottleneck there is more in the, once again, the cable speed and also the processor. The main reason for this upgrade is because the way I edit, <coughs> I'll sit down and I'll look through Cine files, which is raw camera files, 
because it takes up too much space to have everything as video. A raw file is smaller than an uncompressed QuickTime or a lot of tips. So I'll sit down, I'll be like, I think I'll edit this video next. I'll find the video I like. I'll see maybe 12 files that we shot. And at that point, I have to convert them all. So from sitting down like, yeah, let's do it, I then immediately have to set a rendering that might last eight hours. <laughs> You're then like, ah, no, can't be bothered. And by the time that's done, usually it's either <laughs> the next day or way later that day. And I'm like, not, not really in the mood for editing right now. I've, I've been at work all day or something. So if I could just get all those plowing through, and be ready to go within, you know, within the hour, that would be amazing. Ideally, a Phantom would come with like a USB-C on the back and you'd just have Thunderbolt 3, just suck it down immediately. That'd, That'd be, be way faster than 10 gig Ethernet. It'd be too easy. Too easy. Another thing where this will really come in handy is that usually when we do a sponsored video, the client is very keen to see the footage, or at least the first cut, after we've shot. So we'll come back from a shoot and they'll be like, Oh, you get us a cut of the video on Monday. And I'll be like, say we shot it on Friday. I'll be like, it'll take me bloody two days just to deal with all the footage. I'm not even going to start editing until, you know. So now I always push the first cut until at least a week after we shot it. 99, be about 14 minutes. In 13 minutes and 54 seconds. Oh. Hefty. So this is now the setup it's going to be forever. Yeah. You don't need to jostle again because you're only going to be using the 10 gigabit, right? That's right. So you can see that number, it was a 64 gig RAM save into a packed Cine format, which is slightly compressed, reducing the download file to 54 gigs. And that's a full RAM save. So now we'll do it again. Mm-hmm. All right, get a close up of this. Wow, that is disgracefully fast. It's almost per second. Then it was like sixteen seconds for twelve percent at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a, I know I'm a nerd and a loser. It's like that makes me happy. You like, gathering over that? I'm you? getting like I'm getting joy over this right now. You're <laughs> getting a geek bonus. It's almost one percent per second. That is, it's almost that. What percentage are you on now? So if every if every file takes only a hundred seconds to download, what percentage are you on now? Sixty-one. Oh. Sixty-two. Sixty-three. Sixty-four. It's, it is almost one <laughs> percent per second. And this is only the Phantom Flex. This is sort of our mid-range file size producer. The, the 2511 has 96 gigs of RAM, so it'll real help us out on that. Keep your eye on the thing. It's going to end soon. Yeah. Although it will require an upgrade of the other city station. And... Done. Minute 43. Never. <laughs> so, almost 10 times faster. All right. So let's just compare the file sizes, make sure we did, didn't make any mistakes. Let's see. Uh, 1 gigabit Ethernet, 54, 10 gigabit Ethernet. Same exact file size, 54 gigs. So I've shown how the 10 gigabit Ethernet improves my downloads. I want to also show how these new SSDs improve performance in other areas. So I should talk about bit rates for a second. Um, bitrate on an online video, say it's 1080p, probably going to be between 5 and 10 megabits per second. Blu-ray, much higher quality, up to 40 megabits per second. You get higher quality and less compression artifacts with a higher bitrate. ProRes is a format very typically used in editing and production. There are different qualities of ProRes that you can produce, um, going from proxy to LT to just 422 normal. 42HQ, and the highest I can produce with the Phantom software is ProRes 4444. And if we look at the data rate, bit rate, you can see that it's 1.15 gigabits per second. So that's uh, 1,150 
megabits compared to 40 on a Blu-ray. And uh, from my SSD, that plays just fine. Um, a hard drive might struggle with this. Beyond ProRes, I can also create an uncompressed QuickTime, which doesn't actually come with any options. Um, you just pick the debayer algorithm that the Phantom software deals with and the frame rate. The higher the bit rate, the higher the file size. And as you can see here, this ProRes 444 file is smaller than the raw file originally was. However, you can make an uncompressed QuickTime, and I've spelled uncompressed wrong, <laughs> nice, and the file size is absolutely huge, bigger than the original raw file. So let's take a look at what happens if I try and play this off the SSD. Firstly, we'll take a look at the bitrate, a whopping 5.3 gigabits per second. That's 5,300 and whatever megabits. This has a bitrate over 100 times greater than a Blu-ray disc. So this is what happens when we try and play a completely uncompressed QuickTime from a solid state drive through SATA. That seems to be managing it pretty well until and it grinds to a halt. The bitrate is too high for weedy little QuickTime 7 to read fast enough from the drive. So now, why don't we have a cheeky look switch over to the NVMe M.2 slot drive and see how we get on with this uncompressed QuickTime. Playing a five gigabit bitrate video file like it's nothing. Even using QuickTime 7, which sucks. Incredible, incredible read speeds. Successful upgrade in my opinion. I've been wanting to do that for 10 years. 10 years? 10 years. So you knew that there was going to be an NVMe thing that you could do? I've wanted 10 gig Ethernet for 10 years, basically. Because right. it's, it's had it on there. It's had the capability ever since the Cine Station came out, maybe a year after. But uh, we never really had the budget back in the day to uh, spend that kind of money on an upgrade that all it did was make our lives easier, but didn't, it didn't really affect the client didn't really affect the climb on the shoot. So how much is that computer worth now? Okay, let me take from the email. Two SSDs were 1700, 1688, plus the six grand it originally cost. And the cables? Oh, the cables were what, how much? 95 for the original ones and then whatever you spent on that. So let's say 120. Yeah. It's worth 14, thousand two hundred dollars <laughs> that's probably conservative wow and that's that's all based on the prices that were paid at the time so you the, get the some... prices of the stuff that was worth at the time so if i get... bought the original stuff again now it'd probably be cheaper that's a car yeah and it's not cheap making this channel i tell you <laughs> it's really not just in terms of like the extra equipment we need for and as time goes on you know stuff wears out cables wear out monitors get crap drives need replacing. So this is sort of just adding convenience at this point. It was a definite upgrade just to make my life easier in post, but stuff like this really adds to the, to the channel. It makes a huge difference. So thank you audience for watching our videos because we're able to put some of that bunts into, you know, back into the system to make, to make it a smoother operation. And the bottleneck is still in the, in the ethernet. Mm. 10 gig is probably still the bottom end. So you've got to think there, you've made it from 13 minutes 40 to less than two minutes. That's such a huge difference. You're never going to have that much of a difference ever again. No. That's, Unless, the, that's going to be the biggest difference you'll ever have. And you'll probably be in the same situation for the next 10 years. Until like Thunderbolt 5 comes out that's like 100 gigabit. And then I'd be able to get my stuff down to like 10 second hours. You'll be able to wirelessly beam it from the camera. <laughs> Maybe uh, in the future, as I shoot it, it ends up in the timeline. Yeah, it's it already on YouTube. It edits itself. Like <laughs>